welcome to Q Sport. I'm Umudu Gajaga. And coming up tonight, we are talking about the Under-20 Africa Cup of Nations, which is going to be held in Egypt in February. The draw has already been made and Gambia finds itself in Group C. That is where they're drawn alongside Tunisia and also other nations we'll be talking about on tonight's Q Sports. Scan Aid football team, that is a school's football team, under 15 girls, went to the CAF Pan-African Championship in Cape Verde and came out as champions of that competition. And this has given them automatic qualification for the CAF under 15 football competition that is going to be held also in Egypt to participate there later in 2023. We'll also be talking about a Gambian fitness coach and also He's at the same time a bodybuilder based in Doha, Qatar, Ibrahim Sek. He talks about how his competition was in Las Vegas, the United States of America. A few weeks ago, he was there to compete at an international bodybuilding competition. We'll also be talking about basketball. A Gambian basketball player has made history by being the first domestic basketball player to score 65 points in a game. You wouldn't believe it. Um, well, for the most part, even in the NBA, hardly people even get the 40 points mark. But he scored 65 and he joins me in the studio. Amadou Keita will be talking about his story. He's also voted as the most valuable player in this season's Gambia's domestic basketball championship. Finally, we'll also be looking at some other stories on tonight's Q Sports. Welcome and thank you for joining us. This is Q Sports and I'm Mumudu Gajaga. First, we're going to look at the Gambia's participation in the Under-20 Africa Cup of Nations, which is going to be held in Egypt from February the 19th. The Gambia is drawn in Group C. And let's see how Group C pitted them with Tunisia, Zambia and also another team. The Under-20 Africa Cup of Nations Egypt 2023 draw was held on Friday in Cairo. Gambia is among 12 nations that will compete in the youth football tournament to be held in Egypt from the 19th of February to 11th March 2023 across three venues. The draw on Friday saw the Gambia drawn in Group C with Tunisia, Benin and Zambia. The young Scorpions qualified for the competition as runners-up in the Wafu Zone A competition held in Mauritania in September, where they lost 1-0 to Senegal in the final. Gambia will be based in Alexandria, where Group C matches will be played at the 20,000 capacity Alexandria Stadium. The Young Scorpions won the bronze medal by finishing third in the 2021 edition in Mauritania, beating Tunisia 4-2 in the penalty shootout after a nil-nil draw. This matched their 2007 performance when they beat Zambia 3-1 in the third and fourth place match. Reacting to the draw, coach Abdullah Bojang remarked that it was a fair one, noting that his team of technicians have already started working on preparing a competitive squad with support from the Gambia Football Federation. Group A's games will be played at the 75,000 capacity Cairo International Stadium and see host Egypt drawn against Mozambique, Senegal and Nigeria. Group B games will be played at the 22,000 capacity Swiss Canal Stadium and sees Uganda drawn with Central African Republic, South Sudan and Congo. Group C, Alexandria Stadium, the Gambia, Tunisia, Benin and Zambia. A 12-nation tournament will begin with an opening game between the host Egypt and Mozambique on Sunday, 19 February 2023 at 16 hours local time. That takes us to our next story, which is about schools football, Pan-African schools football. It is called and it's been organised by the Confederation of African Football. And this tournament was held in Cape Verde. A Gambian team that has participated is a school, Scan 8 football team. And in the girls category, in the under 15 category, they were crowned as champions of this competition. Well, so unfortunate for the boys, they missed out, but they also reached the final where they played against Guinea. And there is also prize money available in this competition. Well, for the Gambian girls, 
apart from booking their qualification to the tournament proper in Egypt, which is going to be uh, between the under 15 categories, which is the schools who are going to participate in that tournament, they were rewarded 100,000 US dollars. And also for the boys, by reaching the final, they got themselves $75,000 there. And we say a huge congratulations there. And now on Q Sports, let's talk about bodybuilding, if you like, being a fitness coach, a Gambian who is based in Doha, Qatar, Mo Ibrahim Seker has made his life through being a fitness coach and at the same time being a bodybuilder himself. Well, if you look at his physique and how he looks, you'll be definitely sure that definitely he has really worked on his body. He has recently returned to Doha, that is where he's based because he's a fitness coach and he went to a competition in the United States of America, Las Vegas, where he competed among 150 athletes around the world in bodybuilding. Um, I spoke to him earlier via video link through Zoom, and this is how our interview went. Mo Ibrahim Sek, um, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Um, currently, I know you've been traveling. You were recently in Las Vegas for an international competition on powerlifting. Um, tell us about that story. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm honored to be here, man, and thanks for sharing your platform. I'm Mo, I live in Qatar, and uh, I work here as a fitness coach. But, but like you said, of recent, I was in Las Vegas for a bodybuilding competition, uh, which I've been preparing for for a while now. So, yes, it's been a journey. I just got back from there uh, probably a few days ago, two, three days ago. Tell us about the competition. How did it go for you? So yeah, uh, the competition was really great for me. I didn't end up coming out on top, but overall it was a great experience. I got to meet all these people that are considered uh, legends in my sport and I learned a lot. I know now what I need to work on to be better for next time. And it was really great, a great experience, a great learning experience. Uh, and just an overall progress from where I was last year. I competed in Ukraine last year, and this was a much better performance for me. So I'm really, really uh, inspired. I believe even more that now I, I got everything it takes to succeed in this. So it was amazing. I, I couldn't ask for more, even though I didn't win the competition though. Fantastic. Mo, you're a Gambian. I'm sure you left the Gambia a few years ago um, to follow your passion. Um, like you said, you live in Doha, in Qatar, a fitness coach. Um, also, at the same time, you're doing bodybuilding and, and weightlifting. Um, did, is, is this something that you started in Gambia? Yes, so uh, I was always into working out. I've always been in the gym since way back in Gambia. And in 2013 is when I came to Doha. And when I first got here, it was really difficult for me. I went through a lot of difficulties here. Uh, working at construction jobs and several times like it was really really hard probably harder than you can ever imagine so during those days the gym was really the only thing that kind of kept me going like it kept me not uh, it kept me sane like it was the only time that I look forward to throughout my day I was able to go in there and just forget about everything and just like get a good good workout and stuff so I always was into working out and then uh like I, like I said, I was always working out. And when times were really hard for me, the gym was the only thing that I had. So I was always in the gym when I came here as well, basically. You're a fitness coach. Um, tell us about how that works out in Dubai. You you train people or do you do it online? Because I've seen a video of you posted on your Facebook um, page where talking about a certain workout. Yes, yeah, so... Uh, when I, when I came here those days, I was always working out and things were difficult, but uh, thank God I ended up having a job at one of the malls here in, in a store that sells fitness equipment, all kinds of sports equipment, really. So I was working there selling gym equipment, and that's when I started meeting people who were working as uh, trainers. So I started to talk to them and ask for advice because this is something that I really was passionate about. And being that I was already in good shape, they also encouraged me to try to switch up and become a trainer and stuff. So I just tried to find information about how I could go about that. So they gave me some, some connections on where I should do my studies. That's when I started taking up courses on training and nutrition. 
And then once I got all my certifications in place, I left that job and started working at the gym. So I worked at the gym for a while as a personal trainer. And then I stopped working for that gym and started my own business, training people online. So I had clients from all over the world that I'm training uh, through the internet. And also I was uh, training many people in Doha in different hotels. Like I had connection with hotels. And if they would have their guests want to work out, I would go in and train them and also being that a lot of people here have home gyms, I had a lot of clients also that I was going to train in the, in the, in the houses and stuff. And I was doing that for some years. I, I was really doing well at this, at this point. I didn't want to work anymore for another gym. I was enjoy, enjoying my freedom until where this company I'm working for right now is called Katara Club. This is the only gym in Doha that belongs to the government. It's really exclusive. It's for like the top level people, ministers and CEOs and this kind of people. They just like, uh, it's really exclusive basically. So they contacted me, they wanted me to work here. So being that it's Katara Club, I said, okay. Before that I had many job offers in different gyms, but I never went even to take a meeting with them. But when these people contacted me, I came in and I had a meeting with them. They gave me a good offer. So I started working here. I've been working here for two years now, just a little after one year of working here, I got promoted as the head coach of this facility. So I'm still working here as a personal trainer, head coach, basically managing the daily operations of the of the whole gym. Fantastic, Mo. I'm proud of you and wish you all the best of luck. Uh, let's talk about your connections with Gambian sports. Um, we know, obviously, weightlifting, bodybuilding, and that short, it's not that a popular sport in Gambia. I've covered myself a weightlifting competition at the Alliance Frances um, the last time over the last two years. But aside from that, um, it's not mainly known in the Gambia. Do you have any connections with the Ministry of Youth and Sports or the National Sports Council? Like, for instance, if you go to an international competition representing Gambia, um, obviously, um, there should be a connection between you yourself and, and, and the authorities, especially the ministry. So you get support from them or, or things like that. Have you um, been in touch with any one of them? No, I have. I, I don't have any connection with any any anyone that has to do with the government. Uh, the only thing is, like, since I started working out in Gambia, I still have some of my friends that are still into working out. So when they have like the competitions, I try to support that. And when I come to Gambia, also I go to visit different gyms and just talk to the guys and try to give my uh, share my experience with them. But as far as government, no, I don't have any connections with them because. I, again, it's just now that I'm really starting to connect with Gambians and doing interviews with uh, different platforms and stuff like that. But before all this, I was just doing my own stuff. I was out here traveling, joining competition. I was basically just doing my own thing. But now it's a little different now that I'm getting more exposure with Gambians, talking to more Gambians through the internet and stuff. Now I feel like it's uh, getting bigger than just me and my personal goals. I'm trying to really represent us. So, but so far, no, I haven't got any connections with any Gambian companies. So Mo, what are you looking forward to in the future? Um, what do you want to achieve, let's say, for instance, in, in powerlifting, bodybuilding, and being a coach as well, because you're combining all this together? Yes, uh, so it's different things. I am working as a coach, which is my primary job as far as that. I just want to help uh, change as many lives as possible, encourage people to get fit and healthy, healthy eating and exercise and just be active. And for my company here in Qatar, it's a really great company. I'm very happy and grateful to be working here. I want to do the most that I can do for them. For uh, when, whenever the day comes that I leave here, I want for people to say that that guy was a great manager. He was a great uh, head coach here. He did a lot of good things for us. That's what I want to accomplish as far as my job. As far as the computing, I just love it. It's a hobby for me. I'm really just grateful to be able to do something that I really love. And it gives me the opportunity to travel around the world, and meet people. Uh, I would love to one day win one of these international competitions. But even if that doesn't happen, I'm still really happy to just be able to participate in, in these things. And it's given me so many opportunities like being here talking to you right now. Mo, it's been a pleasure talking to you and uh, fantastic and we wish you all the best of luck. So we'll be following your progress and we will have more of this in the future. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks very much. And one of the things I would like to say, uh, 
every time I have interviews with uh, Gambian outlets, a lot of people ask me, like, what are my plans for Gambia? What do, if I have plans on giving back and stuff? Of course, that's why I'm doing this. I hope I hope to be able to one day come back to the Gambia and do big things there. But also, I need the Gambians to, uh, as much as possible, support me and the really... Uh, one way you can support me is just to get in touch with social media and follow my journey. And I'm on YouTube, I'm on Instagram. So whoever is on the internet, I'm more than happy to connect with more Gambians and just to share my story with them. Thank you very much, Mo. Thank you. And have a blessed day. Yes, that's my interview with Mo Ibrahim Seka there in Doha, Qatar. Well, you realize in the interview, I keep saying Dubai. I don't know, maybe because I went to Dubai, that's why I'm here. But Yes, um, in the studio now, um, joining me is Amadou Keita, a Gambian basketball player who broke a record of scoring 65 points in the domestic league. Um, he plays his basketball for Kotu Blue Ninjas. And in that game, they played against Banjo Linding. He scored 65 points. And this was all the way in October. But uh, joining me in the studio, Amadou, welcome. And let's talk about your exploits. How did you do it? Thank you very, thank you very much. Uh, it was not an easy journey, becoming a, trying to be a better player as it's always very hard, working hard to achieve your goals or your dreams. But it couldn't have happened without my teammates. I really, they really supported me in all ways for me to become who I want to be. They, because dropping 65 points actually is a, a hard work. Like it, it requires a lot of hard work. And it was something amazing. Like I, w I was not expecting to drop 65 points at the first place, but I got challenged by Mr. Parshal and Seka. Said, if you drop 60 po 65 points, I have something for you. And I was like, 65, 65 points is, is huge. So my teammates were like, you can do better than that. You can do more than 65 points. I said, OK. Then I took the challenge, and I was able to drop 65 points for that particular game. And you? also voted as the MVP, the most valuable player in this year's domestic basketball season. How does that make you feel? Uh, it was becoming the MVP of past season was, uh, was a big, it's a challenge to me right now because uh, that means I need to work harder to become, to keep that, that, that record because being at the top is not easy. Sometimes it's a bit easier to get to the top than to stay at the top. So that gives me more challenges to work harder to maintain that 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 respect because being at the top everyone is everyone is trying to get to the top so i think i have a lot of work to do i have a lot of things to prove to stay at the top well let's talk about some of the challenges that you faced as far as gambian basketball is concerned we know your courts where you play yeah. are absolutely bad um, you play on yeah, bare actually, concrete um, you can be injured and all of those things yeah. and some of the opportunities are there any opportunities for you guys to go professional? Uh, right now in Gambia, we have zero opportunities as, a, as an athlete in the Gambia, as a basketball player. We have so many challenges, so many difficulties of becoming a basketball player in the Gambia. Our, our league is not yet standard and we have so many difficulties when it comes to developing the game in the Gambia. We need good sponsors and support from everywhere in order for the game to go. We actually have good athletes. We have good young kids trying to come to the game and we have good players who are real talented and can play anywhere in this world. But because of the basketball, the surroundings we have in the Gambia, the conditions of our game and our, our basketball courts, and it, that makes things so hard for us to be at international competitions. And we definitely need exposure to be part of the world because normally we have great players who can compete in any competition we have in, in, in the world. But we have a big problem of attending some international competition, especially when it comes to basketball five on five games. It has been a long time since Gambia, represent, Gambia has been in a five on five international game. And that is, a, that is very discouraging to the game. And we have been for three, we have been to three on three games, and we are doing well. We were doing well at it, and we expect to do much better when we have opportunities to go to five on five games. 
Well, you were somebody who is into basketball. You must have watched the likes of Gorgi Jeng in Senegal, um, who started at an academy, yeah. CIS Academy in Kebemer. Yeah. You know, all the way now into the NBA. Mm -hmm. You yeah. think um, something like that is possible in Gambia? Yeah, 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 definitely. We have, I, as I said, we have a lot of talented young players in the Gambia, and when they are treated, treated the right way, they have the right opportunities. They can most we can have a lot of players who can make it to the NBA. Because it's just about the exposure. They need the exposure. We have young, talented kids. And right now, we are having young kids from lower school, lower basic schools, trying to get into basketball, trying to join academies. We have new academies all around now. Because the National Basketball Federation just, they bring up something that, uh, uh, something that has to do with every club side need to have an academy. So that means that we are having enough academies now in the country. We just need the help, the, spo uh, the support to make things work for the young ones too. Yes, yeah. you've talked about infrastructure. Um, yeah. but finally, let's talk about the condition of your playing surface. Mm. You play on bare concrete. You, you play, it, it poses a lot of risk. But you get yeah. injured? Yeah, we receive so many inju uh, injuries from the, our, our con uh, the conditions we have, as I said earlier. And this basketball court, we, they are very not up to standards and I think we probably need an indoor court to be as to be part of the world because every nation have their indoor court. I think it's only Gambia who does not have an indoor court. And basketball is an indoor game. It's it's gonna be very difficult for you to be practicing at the outdoor court and if you have any international competition and you things are gonna things are gonna be different. It's gonna be very hard for players to be able to do what they can what, what they can do better. So it's going to be so complicated for you to be training on the uh, on outdoor, and if you have chance to play indoor, it's going to be a big challenge for you. Finally, with all these challenges, are you still ready to put your heart and mind into basketball? Yeah, yeah, I'm working. I'm working hard. I'm working hard to change things. I'm working hard to be the better part, the better, the better Amo I was before. So every day I'm putting it into work to make things work well for me and my entire team. I will wish you all the best and we would have more of these conversations and um, I think um, with your ambition, I mm. have to just wish you good luck. I thank you very much. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here and I want the things like this to be happening all the time because basketball need, needed this. Basketball is a sport that we needed this exposure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm. That's Amo Cater, um, Gambia's record breaker when it comes to scoring points in basketball. And that's it for Q Sports tonight. Thank you very much for watching. Join us next week and have a pleasant night. Bye.